So be right up to Charles, up to Minnells FC. Big up to every single one of you live and locked in. Hope everyone's doing well, winning and all that jazz. First and foremost, guys, I want you to smash the piece of that like button. If you haven't hit that like button, smash it right now. Like Bowling Egg Barley's missus, let's have it right. You know the deal. Hit the subscribe button so you know, obviously, we were on the road to 10K. Hit the notification bell, ding dong, all that jazz, so you know when we go live. And we've got the Minnells FC Ultras membership, which is pinned down up below in the description, guys. Big up to everyone. I hope you're all good. Yeah, let's have it right. Um, make sure you tune in to last night's stream and the stream before. Last night's stream with Lee Gunn, it was an absolute blinder, bruv. Great stream. Uh, Minnells landed, realness spoken, no brown envelopes, all that jazz. You know the deal. Um, let's quickly run through the chat. See who's in here. Uh, big up Mickey Joy Boy, my geezer, CFC Daniel, uh, KRF. Big up to you. Big up to Nutty Blue, bruv. Says happy birthday, Roman. You made us see and experience things we thought we would never see. Great comment, bruv, and not wrong. Uh, Mixed Minerals with Dina, big up to you. Big up to Dino, bruv. Uh, big up Immortal Trick Me, Jamar Jones, Carefree Kev, uh, Metal Face Doom, Stuart G, bruv. Big up to you. Big up to Neil. Big up to Top Bins, man. Hope Top Bins are doing well. Uh, Hannah Dennis, FC Van One. Big up to Hannah. Um, big up to JP the Dog. J1 Hilton, bruv, big up to you. Uh, big up to Leo, bruv, big up to Texas Blue. Uh, big up to everyone, man. Get in the chat. Let me know you're live and locked in. I hope everyone's all right. And I thought, uh, you know what? I wasn't planning to do a stream today. And I know we got Champions League football. Well, what a shame, bruv. We we, sh we should be going to the game right now. Watch our Chelsea playing the Champions League. But we can't do that because of these clans owners that robbed us of that. Um, and of all ambition and anything possible of success with Chelsea right now. So we're here having a sit down and I'm doing a fucking stream. It's embarrassing, bro. All right. Um, today is a, is a great day. We want to wish our GOAT owner, the best owner in world football, let's have it right, Roman Abramovich, a happy birthday. And obviously just thank him, bro, because let's have it right. As we always say on the Minnows FC, um, without Roman, this ain't this ain't possible. This is not possible without Roman. Um, but we see things they'll never see. Let's have it right. Um, up the Chels, up Minnells FC. Shout out Chelsea old boys. Rest in peace. And as always, guys, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, all that jazz. But without Roman Abramovich, we do not have those two stars, bro. Yeah? And that's a fact. End of. There's no dispute, bro. Yeah? Um, so here we are. He's been stripped of, of ownership. We know that. He was robbed by the UK government, um, robbed by the politics in the world. And let's have it right. All that money that was stripped from him, it still hasn't been paid out of Ukraine. We're still waiting for that. Why don't the brown envelopes report on that? Why don't they tell the truth about the situation now? I don't know. Why don't we ask the question? Well, we are asking the question because no one seems to know anything. And it's an embarrassment. Yeah. Roman wanted to donate the money that he was meant to get for the football club to the victims in Ukraine. And that has not been deposited there. All right. And we know Ukraine's corrupt right now. We know the situation going on with all the politics. And I'm not there to go into it. We're, we're here to talk football and talk about our football club. But you cannot avoid understanding what is going on behind the scenes and why Roman Abramovich got Chelsea taken from him, bro. Yeah? Because let's have it right. He was never want in, in any any way did he want to sell Chelsea Football Club. He didn't want to... He wanted to pass Chelsea Football Club onto his son and his children to continue the legacy. That was the whole plan. Um, and he can't do that. Obviously, for obvious reasons, he can't do that. And this is where we are now. We're sitting here with fucking Tweedledee and Tweedledum that everyone goes, oh, Johnny, why are you coming with an agenda at the owners? What are you coming at the owners for? What am I coming at the owners for? Because our GOAT owner bought our club for 140 million off Ken Bates. Yeah, let's have it right. And from the moment he took over our football club, from the moment he walked into our football club, the, the, the implementation of winning mentality Elite winning mentality. He wanted to make Chelsea the biggest club in London, in England, and in Europe, in the world. 
he wanted Chelsea to go to those levels. And he was looking at Spursy and he said, nah, forget Spursy. I want to buy Chelsea Football Club. And he bought Chelsea Football Club. And from that moment, he took over our football club. Let's have it right. He spent money, he spent relentlessly. He got the best of the best in every department throughout his reign. Let's have it right. That's what he did from the moment he took over, bruv. Yeah. And he didn't rock the boat. He didn't sack the entire medical team. He didn't sack the gaffer straight away. He didn't sack all these players off. He did it with transition. He's a football man. He loved football. He loved the ideology of, of, of running Chelsea Football Club. And that's exactly what he went and done. And he done it with class, style, minerals, money, anything he wanted. He made sure he got it. And that's what you do when you want to be successful at a football club. You see, for Roman Abramovich, it wasn't about money. It was never about making money. He's already a billionaire, bro. Yeah? He had MI5 in his pocket, real estate in his pocket, MPs in his pocket. He's got Putin on his side, as we all know. He's, he's an oligarch. It goes without saying. That's well documented. But he run the game. He, he never needed to hand out brown envelopes to PR to, to to the FA, to the governing bodies in football. They hated us because of Roman, because Roman did it his way and no one could touch Roman Abramovich. Yeah, so have it right. No one could touch him. Therefore, no one could touch Chelsea Football Club. And Chelsea Football Club were hated because of that. And we were hated even more because of our success under Roman. You see, Roman didn't go, I'm going to come and buy Chelsea and I'm going to build a multi-club project and I'm going to buy all these young kids and I'm going to build up Chelsea from having Zolas, Viales, Hullets, uh, LeBeufs, and all these players, Lampard, John Terry's, etc. Um, I'm going to just, you know, steady the ship and we're going to look at a 10-year plan and I'm going to rebuild the stadium and I'm, I want to make money and I'm going to build it. No, nah, let's have it right. He came in, he wanted to win from the get-go, bruv. He wanted to win from the instant, get Champions League football, go in and win the Champions League football, win Premier League titles. He went and got Jose Marino. I'm not just one out of the bottle. I'm a special one. Let's have it right. And he brought him to Chelsea, elevated us instantly, instantly spent money. You could say some of the signings weren't great. Some of our, it, that's how it goes in football. Not every signing works. Not every signing is the perfect signing. He never works like that in football. So there is a major risk in that. Maybe Ted Lasso and Siri Merchant should pay attention to that and understand that buying all these kids ain't going to all click, ain't going to all work, they ain't going to fulfil their pen potential and all this jazz, all right? They're not all going to be elite wonder kids, superstars, bruv. That's the way football is. And we know that because we experienced that under Roman. But Roman knew what he wanted. And he came to Chelsea and he transformed Chelsea Football Club into a winning machine. And we were the hardest team to beat. We had men, bruv, not boys, not kids. We had men in our team. And he integrated that with some youth, some younger players of talent. And, and, and throughout the years, he, he, that's, that's all demonstrated. But that's the difference between Roman Abramovich and these inexperienced, arrogant clowns that we have at our football club right now who are going with just a, a model that's never worked in, in, in European football, in football at all. It's not part of the winning blueprint. All right. So they, they're they taking a huge gamble as it is on top of buying players, which is even more of a gamble. All right. Roman didn't sack medical teams, tea ladies, pitch up uh, uh, all your pitch um, controllers. He didn't get rid of um, all the directors and all this. He brought in Peter Kenyon from Manchester United, which was the benchmark. All right. He got the best of the best. We poached Robin to give you an example from Manchester United because Peter Kenyon was already working on that deal before he came to us to bring Robin to Man United. And we took Robin and he was part of our success winning the title and then winning it back to back under Jose Marino. We bought Damien Duffs. We bought all these players, bruv. Didier Drogba's. All these guys, man. We bought players that had 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 experience. Some of them were young, but a lot of them had experience at the highest level. And we took them. And we bought them and we turned our team into a winning machine. And the thing is, Roman wasn't like, I'm going to build around a, a gaffer. He may have done it under Jose and then it was all about winning and this and that. All right. But we know that most, most gaffers were yes men under Roman. But it didn't matter because Roman, no matter what, if you do not win, you're out of that football club. You're out of our club. You're out the door. You're getting sacked. He sacked Ancelotti down the tunnel after winning the double, bruv. That's, that's how ruthless Roman was because his forefront main priority was to make sure that we are always winning year in, year out to dominate football. Kind of like what Man City are doing now, 
how Manchester United were in the past. Arsenal had a little period where they were in a, in a dominant era. But Chelsea was that club. And then we started steamrolling everyone. We beat everyone and anything. And we went through heartache to get Champions League and this and that. And that was part of the magical journey with, and the emotional journey with Rona Barrett. The bottom line is this. There it is, chalk and cheese between Roman and these owners we got our football club now. And the ones we got our football club now will never be Roman Abramovich. They will never, ever be as successful as Roman Abramovich. They ain't going to win as many titles. They ain't going to, well, at this rate, we don't win any titles. They ain't going to win as many. They ain't going to win the lot. Let's have it right. They ain't got the capacity to do it. Their model doesn't, doesn't collaborate with how Roman run things. And it was elite mentality from Roman all the way down. And he called the shots and he got his directors in, etc., etc. And it filtered all the way down to the gaffer. And he didn't go in and out the dressing room every game like a Steve Sidwell, the brown envelopes would use him to put him out and say that he was always going to that dressing room. Bollocks, mate. Absolute bang smash waffle. No onions, no gravy. You're a long way from Starbucks. All that jazz. Because Roman went in. Down in his chopper in Cobham to sack the gaffer. That's the first time you see him. The second time is when we've won a trophy. And Wayne Bridge spoke of it. He came to dressing room. One of the players said, look, can we get a bonus as a joke? And he just nodded and they got a bonus. They gave bonuses, yeah, on top of their wages, which were massive wages, yeah, because the wage structure, it was irrelevant with Roman, bro. Yes, we've all we all seen that he's made mistakes and Marina's made mistakes, but every, every owner, every club does. The mistake he never made, all right, was what these clowns are doing. You understand me? What he's done is won every trophy. He gets a pass on every aspect, bruv. No one should ever diss Roman Abramovich. No one should even mud Roman Abramovich for the sake of these clowns, defending these clowns, which is what all these PR merchants are doing. All these accounts, all these media bots, yeah? They're all doing it, yeah? It's, 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 it's just hilarious. I'll give you an example when you talk about the media. Yesterday, James Madison run the show um, probably man of the match. He's got like six assists now or seven assists or he's got another goal, whatever it is, whatever his stats are. Yeah. Let's remind everyone, we didn't buy this player. Yeah. Because he's 26 years old. He's older than 25. Doesn't fit the mould and profile that they're looking for. One year older, we didn't buy this player. And we need the number 10. Because you sold Havertz and Mount, who are our natural number 10s. And Kunku ain't a number 10. And Cole Palmer isn't a natural number 10. Even Conor Gallagher's nowhere near that kind of number 10. Enzo's not a number 10. So they're inexperienced, not hiring the right people in charge, the right directors that understand football, that are from the big clubs, from the elite clubs, which is what you should have gone and done. When Bowley sat there and lied to everyone and goes, we're going to get the people that are experienced in the game to actually, you know, help us and, and collaborate with us so that we can, we can build a team. Um, and no, you know, put the right people in charge so Chelsea can compete at the highest level. It's the biggest load of bangers and mash waffle. I had a fan nonsense that has happened at Chelsea. And people believe that. Well, this track record over a year will tell you otherwise because it's not that. It's the complete opposite because they're the ones playing director of football and, and sporting director, Siri Merchant and Ted Lasso. And don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that Carrot Win Stanley and Stuart Little, you think that they're the ones running and calling the shots. You're a long way from Starbucks, yeah? And I know the Minnows FC Ultras understand that and they get that. And that's the facts of the matter. The, the other thing is this. When you look at this whole PR with, with Madison having a great game, this and that, being probably one of the standout signings, one of the standout players, what came out? What came out yesterday? Wonderful PR came out, Yeah. One of the rumours, one of the numerous reasons Cole Palmer was signed from Man City is because of his versatility in attacking areas. He's predominantly a right winger, but can also be used through the middle in the number 10 role. But on Saturday evening, it was a new role for Palmer, who was um, essentially being deployed as a false nine. Let's have it right, yeah? The timing of that from the brown envelope, Bobby Vincent, yeah, was last night after the Spurs game because everyone's talking about James Madison. And how we are in need of a number 10 because we've got so many injuries and we haven't actually got a natural number 10. So my thing is the timing of this right now was right on cue because of the Madison PR. These owners have got, I had their 10 pence through the brown envelopes. So it makes Ted Lasso and Siri Merchant look like, yeah, we got the better deal. When Palmer is inexperienced, we know he's a nice player. We know he's young, but he's unproven. 
But this is the whole game. This is exactly what they do. Let's remember, yeah, Roman Abramovich avoided the media. He avoided press. It was a tight-lipped ship. No one knew nothing was going on up behind Chelsea's closed doors, yeah? It was very rare. It was very hard to get information. Now, it's free willy, bruv. It's all out in the open like we're in a brothel, bruv, yeah? Everyone knows what's Chelsea. They use these guys relentlessly to put out their narratives, to fight against the other narratives that are going about that actually make them look bad, that make them look like they don't know what they're doing, make them look like they're making poor decisions because the, the reality is that they are. They're making the wrong decisions. They've gone about it the wrong way. And Rona Baric, you're not in the same league. Let's not forget why he came at Rona Baric. His dislike for Roman gave him ammunition to buy Chelsea Football Club. We've seen the articles. I've got it here clipped. Yeah, he had the driven uh, ambition and drive to buy Chelsea because of his dislike for Rona Baric. You've got Siri Merchant coming out about how the club was run poorly under Roman and they didn't look at data and this and that. Listen, Roman didn't have to look at data. He didn't need to look at data. He'd get the elite players in the game. He'd go and buy proven players, experience. Doesn't matter. His policy was anyone over age 30, he would restrict their contracts to two years. Let's have it right. That's as far as you get with Roman. Roman knew what he wanted and he wanted the best of the best in every department, top to bottom at Chelsea. These owners want it their way because none of these elite players in the game, none of these board members, none of these guys, sporting directors, let's let's talk, bring up Michael Edwards. He's staying a long way from this project. Chris Vavell walked away from this project. Yeah, Everyone doesn't want to get involved with these clans because they're building a super youth team, which is exactly what we've got in front of our eyes. Average age of 21 years old. Roman never done that. And everyone goes, Johnny, you're living in the past. Romans, it's a new era now. New era because it's been served to us. I will not drop my standards because of these owners and their clown antics and their way of implementing a multi-club model all to for the pound. No, I'm not doing that. I demand winning with Chelsea Football Club. You've sabotaged everything Roman has built, all right? And everyone in, in all the games, all the platforms, all the YouTube lot, they never speak on it. They will never speak on it. It's clear as day. That we have been shut down, bro. We have been mugged off. And these owners have been forced upon us. And they need to get it right. And they need to go out and buy proven pedigree. And you're linking us now. You've bought us a third choice goalkeeper from Brighton, the Seagull Merchants, who you love to benchmark us on. You love to put us on their level, bro. And now they're above us in the tables and all that jazz, yeah, in European football. Because you want to plagiarise their nonsense project, bruv, which they've got no ambition. They've never had success. So their supporters are happy to go with that process. They've got all the time in the world, just happy to be in the Premier League. What about us, Chelsea? We've won the lot. We've been up there. We've been the most successful and dominant team over the last 20 years. And before that, we were laying the foundation, still winning caps before Roman. So where are you taking our football club? You've hacked it down. You pissed on all the ashes, bruv. And you're rebuilding it. It's unnecessary. You didn't need to do that. You've caused yourself more issues, more problems, because you want to maximise the branding. It was already a big brand. It's already a worldwide brand. It's already got the fan base. We've got a bigger fan base than Arsenal, any club in London, bruv. What are you doing here, man? It's, it's embarrassing. You've sold all of our top players to bring us young players with potential that get tired after 70 minutes of playing a 90-minute game. This is the levels, man, because the, the mentality ain't there to be successful and run this club. If you were really successful, wanted to be successful, and you were really caring about ambition and making Chelsea continue the trajectory that Roman had us on. And don't give me this bang as a mash waffle. Roman didn't compete for us for the last five years. We won the champ we won Europa Cup, Europa League, Champions League. Super Cup, Club World Cup, domestic finals that we, we didn't win, obviously. All right. We were always getting top four. You forget the transfer ban. You forget all the injuries and all the issues, bruv. And we still managed to win trophies because that was the Chelsea way. That is Chelsea. This is Chelsea, what we're doing. What we're doing now, this ain't Chelsea. This is a long way from Chelsea, bruv. This is Mickey Mouse stuff. This is pantomime. This is a circus act. This is brown envelope to everyone's eyeballs, bruv. No one can see nothing except brown envelopes in the Matrix, bruv. That's all they see, man. We got Everyone's got to wake up in the fan base. And then you got, I've got a, a little comment from the Chelsea fan TV. It's embarrassing. You know, why are you coming at the owners for? What are you coming at the owners for? Give them a chance. Give them a chance, bruv. They spent a billion. A billion. We're worse for it. We had 19 points last season after nine games. 
We've got, what, 12 points this season after nine games. We've gone through four gaffers. We've sold our entire successful team that Roman had. There is no fucking way, all right, no way that Roman is selling Mason Mount, Kai Havertz, who, let's have it right, well documented. He fought tooth and nail for Kai Havertz. He was an admirer of Kai Havertz. In fact, he loved Kai Havertz. If anyone's going, it's the gaffer going, not the, not the players, bruv. That's how Roman did it, bruv, yeah? That's how he did it. There's no fucking way, bruv, that he's selling those two players. There's no way he's letting go of N'Golo Kante or even Kovacic. He would pay the wages because he wants to keep Chelsea at the top. Do you understand me? These guys have stripped us of all that. All right, Roman's not getting done in the market. He's not going in the market paying over the odds when we're the only club there. We've got Marina, Iron, the Iron Lady, negotiator. She'll go in there and she'll land it, bruv. Yeah? She knows. She's experienced. They stripped all of that out. They're clowns, man. They sit down, great meal, wonderful food, man. They don't know how to run a football club because they've never run a football club. Roman never run a football club. But I tell you what, he got people that could properly. And he let them do their job. Funny that you let people do their job and you might build on that success. You all we had to do was tweak our team, integrate, keep the wage structure, some high, medium, low, and you bring in these young players that want to play with N'Golo Kante, that want to play with Mason Mount, that want to play with uh, Kovacic, Champions League winners, Super Cup winners, European Cup winners, but yeah, to build upon the success, Champions League football. And you don't have to give them the same wages as them because they're proven at Chelsea. These are young players. They'll accept their 200 grand a week, 180 grand a week. That's the way it worked when Roman did it. When he bought Eden Hazard, do you think he just gave Eden Hazard 300 grand a week at 21 years old? Of course he didn't. You had your top earners, Didier Drogba, Lampard, Terry's, and all these guys, man. They earned the right to be the top earners in the club. Ashley Coles, players like that. He would go to Arsenal and take their best players, bruv. Yeah, he took Ashley Cole, best player, bruv. He even took Giroud, man, at the age he did. And Giroud came and won European Cup with Chelsea Football Club because Arsenal dead, never won it. Do you understand me? Took Fabregas, bruv, who left Arsenal to go to Barcelona. And we took him from Barcelona to Chelsea. Let's have it right. That's what we do, man. We take their players and they come to Chelsea because of our winning mentality. Now, we're taking just young kids that really want to come to Chelsea because they can't believe they're at Chelsea. That's the mentality of Chelsea now. It's a fucking embarrassment, man. It's an absolute embarrassment, bruv. Yeah? Big up to everyone. Smash the like button, all that jazz. Smash the like button. And this is a fact, bruv. These are the facts, yeah? These are the facts. There is no way... Roman is selling. Mason Mount was, in in his vision, was the face of Chelsea Football Club. He was going to give him the 300 grand a week contract or 250 grand a week contract. You knew under Roman, the, the academy he built up. we got academy players now that want to leave Chelsea because they're seeing there's no gateway because you've got a whole fucking first team full of young kids from different countries and different leagues that other of them ain't even proven they got no chance, bruv. They want to leave. Roman had granted he had players in the youth academy that he was building up and that it was bankrolling because just let's have it right. They weren't ready and they weren't good enough to come into Chelsea. We had the transfer ban and that's it, bruv. Yeah, that's it. My point was this. We're looking at the third choice goalkeeper, Sanchez from Brighton. They love to sign him. And now we're looking at Ramsdale, who's the second choice at Arsenal. That's the levels. That demonstrates exactly how these owners think, yeah? And you're going to, what, pay 60 million for Ramsgate, Ramsdale, yeah? Is this a joke, bruv? Is this a joke? It's embarrassing, man. I'm tired of this shit. Big up to Tarot he says, Roman loved Mount fight and pressing, so did I. Listen, it's not just that. He saw him as, he, he knew, he was told he's the best talent to come out of Chelsea. He's the most technical and talented player to come out of the academy, bro. He won us the Champions League. What under Roman? Under the pressure of Roman, Mason Mount came at 19 years old and landed it, bruv. Play of the season back-to-back, -back, bruv. Part of our success. 
You think Roma's selling that player to fucking Man United? You're a long way from Starbucks. This is a joke, man. This, these our owners don't have any sentiment. They don't give a shit about the fans. They don't care about the fans. Because everything they're doing tells you that. But you're so fucking soft. You're so blinded by all this PR that they, they feed you that you, you can't see it. You can't see it. You don't want to see it. Because people like me that speak out and I'm the agenda merchant and I'm the one that's negative and I'm the one that's like, give them time. Give them fucking what time, man? You think we're going to get top four this season? You're a long way from Starbucks. I can't see it, man. It ain't happening. So what, you want to wait another year, another two years to get Champions League football and that's the benchmark? Come on, man. How far have your standards fallen in the mud? You're a, It's embarrassing, mate. Absolutely embarrassing, bro. Absolutely embarrassing. Yeah. Aaron Ramsdale holds a valuation of 60 million. Sources indicate that Chelsea would be interested in signing him if the opportunity arose. I mean, what are we doing here, man? Why can't... Listen, I told you about this model. This model doesn't collaborate with buying the best of the best. We'll never be able to buy the best of the best. You're never going to get that. Fucking rattles me, man. I just get rattled by it, yeah? I just get absolutely rattled by it. Look at this, yeah? Look at the levels, bruv. Look at the levels here, yeah? 140 million to buy our club, bruv. Five Premier Leagues, three, two Champions League, five FA Cups, three League Cups, two European Leagues, two Community Shields, one UEFA Super Cup, one FIFA Club World Cup, bruv. 13 managers. He spent 2.1 billion on transfers, bruv, in 18 years. These clowns have spent 1 billion, 1 billion in just a year. And we are worse than what Roman built. And you lot go, trust the process. Under Roman, we never had trust the process. The process was to win. If you don't win, you're out. Why is everyone's standards just, you're accepting this? Why? I ask you, why? Yeah? And you lot got platforms and you feed all this bullshit, man. You should be putting pressure on these fucking clowns and you're not doing that. You're doing that because what? you got little ties, is it? In a circle, is it? Happy go lucky. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Three bags full, sir. I'll do whatever you say, sir. We're not going to say a bad word against you because we're linked with the club. Listen. Your club should be number one priority and your standards for our club that has been set by our GOAT owner, Roman Abramovich, should never change or be lowered or altered, bruv. And that's the problem, is that the media, the brown envelopes, journalists, everything, all these platforms have manipulated every little minion that follows and believes this nonsense to lower their standards and believe these, these PR Happy Meal byproducts, bruv, Yeah of what they want to do and what they're telling you they're going to do and you're just going to have to accept it because they've manipulated you into believing that it's the right way. It's, it's going to work. It's all going to be successful, bro. Yeah? It's bollocks. Absolute waffle. Yeah? Waffle, mate. Do you know how many brand envelopes are paid out to try and fucking make sure that these supporters don't turn, that they don't voice their true opinions. Do you know how much it takes to control that? Big money. Big, big money. A lot of people in your pocket. Roman didn't have to buy the fans. He won the fans because of his mentality. Him winning. There is no other way that Ted Lasso and Siri Merchant can keep the supporters happy and where Chelsea should be without winning, consistently winning trophies and being competitive at the highest level. Well, we've got to wait five years, apparently. We've got to wait three years, five years, six years. We've got to wait for this new stadium. We've got to wait for this whole process. Time ain't on your side. Time isn't kind. Premier League ain't kind. We ain't fucking well kind. And Ted Lasso comes out and says, well, the supporters are really demanding. Your course we're demanding. Roman set the bar, bruv. He set the bar so high that you lot are, are like a like a hooker trying to lower it, bruv. 
spiraling down it, man, to lower it down. And everyone, everyone's tipping you lot, thinking you're doing a great job because you spent money. We're just happy we spent money. Spent money on what, man? Do you know what's funny? Is that supporters are coming out going, well, we need to at least add maybe three, four, five more players. We've spent a billion. So you're asking for what? Another 500 million because they've gone and got a 500 million investment for, from pissing down a billion already where we still need to sort our squad out and our team. And we still haven't got a car and we still don't have experience. <laughs> He's laughable, man. He's laughable. You bring us a uh, poor mentality gaffer. Yeah. You sack our elite mentality gaffer, winning machine for a jellyfish potter who you fought to for now and make sure you don't sack because Ted Lasso vouched for this guy with Siri Merchant and Chris Vivell said to you, you need to get rid of this guy. He's not good enough because Chris Vivell probably didn't even know that these owners are going in that dressing room dictating lineups, bruv. We got Mauricio Pochettino coming out saying the, fa the fans would kill me if I didn't play Casado and Enzo. Even the owners would kill me as well. They would come at me too. Why are you saying that the owners will come at you too? That's basically telling us that the owners are forcing you to play these guys. Even though you know that they're not match fit or they're not ready or they're mentally not right or whatever the condition is. Or maybe you just don't think that they're good enough in the position you need. Whatever it is, you didn't even want these signings. These signings were given to you because Pochettino doesn't have the say in these. And these are the facts. But people want to believe that these are Pochettino signings. Then they'll go, oh no, they're not Pochettino signings. We know they're the board signings, but when you talk about Tuchel, you'll go, they're Tuchel signings. So which one is it? What, you think all of a sudden that it changes, that they're going to go, yeah, here, Pochettino, you give it, give you the keys. You're a long way from Starbucks. You move goalposts to suit your narratives so that you can't be in the mud. When in reality, you're in the mud, you're in the my woods, bruv. Let's have it right. You're all false. You're all false narrative setters. You're fake. You're liars. And you need to sort it out because it's embarrassing, bruv. Yeah? embarrassing and anyone who comes at Roman to uh, to defend these guys that are our football club and any of these large platforms any of these accounts bruv yeah you need to get in the bin you're a disgrace yeah absolute disgrace and let's have it right yeah in the, these are the facts and I've always said it Pochettino doesn't matter if he if we, if we don't get Champions League football after this money being spent and him not being able to develop the players because they're not good enough and they're too young and they need too much development and he hasn't got time for that. And everyone everyone else in the in the league table is better than us and got experience of quality that'll get them over the line or they've got more of an elite gaffer. Let's have it right. Who's going to get the blame? Who's going to get the sack? Who are the supporters and all these YouTube platforms, all these accounts going to come at? I'll tell you. They'll only come at Pochettino. They'll only set agendas on players. Like, they were only recently throwing agendas on fucking, uh, what's his name? Mikhail Mudrik, bruv. Yeah? They're throwing agendas on Raheem Sterling. They're throwing agendas on Chilwell. They were calling for Reese James to get sold because of injury. They were coming at Thiago Silva, who's our, our, one of the best centre-backs we'll ever see play for Chelsea. And, and football, in as football heritage, you will ever see play in the game of football, bruv. Rolls-Royce player, Yeah? And all of a sudden, oh, we're, we look like we're developing. We've beaten Burnley. We've beaten Fulham. And all of a sudden, we've beaten Seagull Merchants. And now we're landing it. And then we've like, bottled a 2-0 lead to Arsenal, who didn't turn up, who are a shadow of what they are. An embarrassment, yeah? And we managed to bottle that. And you, you blame the goalkeeper, but you don't blame who bought the goalkeeper, who was a third-choice goalkeeper from Brighton. There's Ebry, who you twerk for. This guy who thinks he's Pep Guardiola is a fraud, bro. Yeah? Guys are fraud. Yeah. You got Ange, who no one even knew about, coming from Scottish League, yeah, Aussie, and he's got Spurs at the top of the table, sold their best striker, one of the best strikers in the world, bruv. Yeah. And they're top of the league and they're playing away a football. And he hasn't made the signings. He's problem solved. He said, This is the way I play, the way I play. And if you don't adapt, that's it. You ain't gonna play. That's the levels in the game. We don't have that. We don't have that. But no one will blame these owners. No one. Who do you think calls all the shots, man? Wake up. There's only two that call the shots. Siri Merchant and Ted Lasso. And that's it, bro. Yeah? 
The project is to, about making money. The project is about building a super youth team. The project is about buying other clubs uh, and farming players and buying the best crop of young talents to hope that they turn into Lionel Messi's and Neymar's and Hazard's and all this jazz, bruv. They find the next uh, Paolo Maldini, bruv. You know, the next Van Basten and all this nonsense, bruv. Yeah? Football doesn't work like that. And you're using our club to beachhead and streamline from Chelsea. Yeah? To attract all these young players. When they see Chelsea, they think of Chelsea under Roman. It's not like that anymore. It's not the same Chelsea. And everyone goes, oh, you're in the past. I ain't in the past, man. I've got standards. I expect and demand Chelsea to be up there because we were up there two years ago. We were winning trophies with a so-called dead squad, a so-called crap team. We were up there getting top four. We got top four with Frank Lampard with a transfer ban. No as and Hazard. Bringing through youth. And the mentality from Roman and the board made sure we got top four at all costs because it was about winning. And everyone knew what it was all about and played for Chelsea. If you don't play, you don't, if you don't play to the level that you, uh, Roman and your gaffer expects and Chelsea expects and the way that the academy has trained you and drilled in you, you ain't going to play and you're going to be sold or loaned. And everyone's dream was to make it Chelsea. Now it's just, it's not even a dream to play for Chelsea. It's like free ticket. Free ticket club for Chelsea. Yeah. I am sick to fucking death of everyone benchmarking us with Arsenal and Spurs. And look at how their, their trajectory is and how they develop. We're not Arsenal. We were above Arsenal. We were above United. We we're above Spurs. We were above these clubs two years ago. Less than two years ago. And because of your fuck-ups and countless mistakes, disastrous mistakes, we are now behind all these clubs and you want to feed us the brown envelopes to say, well, look at what Lego Ed's doing at Arsenal. Look at the all or nothing. Yeah? Well, they won nothing. Zilch. Nout. We have. We didn't believe in all this nonsense. Youth project. That's what Arsene Wenger did. And Jose Mourinho came out as his specialist in failure, bruv. The moment you accept playing well and not winning, you don't become a big club anymore. Quote, unquote, Jose Mourinho. Where's that mentality? Where's po Why is Pochettino, our gaffer, after losing, two after losing a 2-0 lead, having a joke about with Arsenal's goalkeeping coach? And our goalkeeper's a third tier for a third, third choice goalkeeper that we bought as our number one, selling Kepa, who wants to stay at Real Madrid, who Real Madrid want to keep, that you lot fend the gender on, who we all thought wasn't good enough because our levels were at the top with Roman where we expected our blacks, world class, Petr Cech's world class keepers. Now we're settling for this squad players to play, be our number one. And you're having a, you're having a joke. You should be running down that tunnel you should be absolutely hammering these kids and letting them know the deal that we need to get top four and we've dropped two points and we were two nil up in control of the game against Arsenal. We didn't play very well and we didn't take advantage. Instead, we let them in the game. Why? Because we got inexperienced. Our kids got tired. There was no quality on the bench. Because of what? Because our owners sold all of our quality. We didn't have an N'Golo Kante to bring on for, full, for, for half an hour to close out the game. We didn't have a, a Mason Mount in the team. We didn't have quality off the bench of threat and versatility. We had Muduweke, bruv. We had Jackson coming back from injury, man, who can't finish his dinner. A kid who's, who scored eight goals in the last 10 games uh, for, who is it, Celta Vigo, and, and we bought him on that basis, who didn't play a whole season, who doesn't even get minutes for his country. Five minute cameo and these melts on the on the timeline and making compilations. It's embarrassing, man. We have literally become a, a, a club that accepts being top four is our trophy. That's what this fan base have accepted now. Because I'm telling you now, if we don't get Champions League football this season, and it's a long way from Starbucks right now. 
What's the excuse next year? Because we ain't going to be even better. You think these players are going to develop into world-class players? Every single one of them? We're losing Thiago Silva, bruv. What happens when Real Madrid come in for Rhys James and Rhys James is not playing Champions League football and then in his contract, he's not getting any Champions League bonuses. So he's getting less money than a fucking Enzo Fernandez, bro. And a Casado that just joined our club or Raheem Sterling. You think Rhys James can be happy and he's captain? What, you think these players are not stupid? And what are you going to say? You're going to turn. We've got our supporters fighting two for now to defend Conor Gallagher all right, who they were all throwing agenda after agenda, saying get rid of him, sell him. The owners wanted to sell him for two transfer windows, January to, uh, to Everton, sitting him down, forcing him, all right, and he didn't want to go. They wanted to force him to Spurs and West Ham, but he doesn't want to go there, so they couldn't get rid of him. He's now our captain, but yet you've got Enzo Fernandez giving orders to Raheem Sterling, who's our senior player of experience, a minerals general, to give the penalty to Cole Palmer instead. He tells you everything you need to know that the hierarchy, the authorities are shambles at this football club. It's a mockery. The, the captain armband's been thrown around like a prostitute, bro. Yeah? There's no substance. There's no value to it anymore. Thiago Silva doesn't even want it, bro. When we were under Thomas Tuchel, even Jellyfish Potter, it was an honour for him to be our captain and wear that captain armband. But because we had to give it a Reese James, because that was in the contract, and I'm not dissing Reese because I... I do love Rhys James, and he's our he's our only fucking proper Chelsea Cobham boy right now, along with Conor Gallagher, because Trev Perez has been forced out. Matson's going to be forced out. We've sold Mason Man. We're selling all of our all of our players, bruv. We've got Carwill, yes, but he's still a baby at the moment, all right, and just potential. And now we've got everyone defending Conor Gallagher all of a sudden because he's been our best performer. Because let's have it right, our standards. And our level of quality in our entire team and squad has been so far lowered, bruv. It's like Connor's going to look the best player. And I know he gives 110%. I know that. I don't doubt that. But let's have it right. He's nowhere near Mason Mount level. He's nowhere near playing in a midfield with Kovacic. You could throw Casado and Enzo with Mason Mount. He doesn't get in that team. End of. Doesn't get in it. And everyone knows it. But you fed a gender amount and now you're sponsoring Gallagher. It's fucking laughable, man. You're agenda merchants, you're wrongins, you're flip-flops, you melts. You don't know what you're doing. You don't, you, or you do know what you're doing. You're doing it all for clicks, all right? The reality is, now look at you, man. You can't not have Conor Gallagher in your team lineup because no one else is stepping up, bruv. He's the only one from midfield that's got us two assists, bruv. And we spent over 250 million and we can't even get a goal and assist out of them, bro. We can't even beat Arsenal at home, man. We haven't beat a top, top 10 side for 12 to 13 months. We lo we're losing to Spursy now away. Last season. And Ted Lasso is coming out. And what's he saying, bro? <laughs> He's gone out on a piss up in Mayfair after the breakout with the media, that Jellyfish got death threats. Why are you on the piss up? That's a serious matter. Did we ever, did the top-notch bacon ever catch those ones that did it? Never got reported. David Pornstein? Where are you, sunshine? Fabrizio? Kingpin Brown Envelope? Where are you? Where's Matt Law? You put out all these articles. So where's the solution? You didn't. Because all bangers mash waffle to make the supporters simmer down, soften up to Jellyfish Potter because these clowns didn't want to be proved that we're in the mud and they're in the wrong and they still are in the wrong. And you let's not forget, you brought us an ex-Spursy gaffer. So there is no way until this guy beats Spurs. He has to beat Spurs. Fuck Brentford. We should be beating Brentford. If you do not beat Spurs away, where we go there every year and we annihilate them and we beat them even when we don't play well, they ain't ever going to accept this gaffer. Ever. Yeah? Not even the worst owners that everyone says in world football, the Glazers, are this fucking bad. No way. No way are they this bad. No chance. Yeah? They've done damage. Yes, they have. They've done it over time. But they buy, bruv. They pay wages, mate. 
They pay big wages. They're paying Casemiro almost 400 grand a week. Yeah. They're not Mickey Mouse like that. But it's very hard to continue a legacy after one of their greatest managers ever in existence. It's a hard act to follow that. Well, it's a hard act to follow, Ted Lassaboli and Siri Merchant, after Don Roman Abramovich. Because you ain't got any minerals to replicate what our Don created at Chelsea Football Club. What legacy he built. You will never have the minerals to do that. Let's have it right, bruv. Yeah? You have brought us a weak mentality, bruv. Weak mentality. That's what you brought. And you've somehow managed to manipulate our supporters into believing and buying into this project. Project X. Project explicit nonsense, bruv. XG porno shit. Yeah? That's what you're buying into. Tosh. Quote, unquote, Alan Brazil. Yeah? Tosh. That's what you're buying into. False narratives. Because all they're interested in is making money. And they're going to make their money. You think we're going to buy Osman and, and Rams, uh, Ramsdale, whatever he's called. Ramsgate, yeah. Right, Ramsdale, yeah. We're going to buy them them two. All right. 60 million for Ramsdale and 130 million for Osman. How do you think we're doing that? To balance the books. Make sure the book's all right. Well, you've got a bankroll. You've got to sell players. You've got to sell your Trevor Matson. You've got to sell your Conor Gallagher's. They're pure profit. Just like they did last, uh, this this summer. Mason Mount made us the most money. 65 million. Pure profit. Wages were 70 grand a week. Do the numbers. Do the maths. That's what it's all about. And when they, when they, when they sold Mason Mount, it was deadline day on balancing the books. To hand those books in for that three-year financial fair play period. Let's have it right. Yeah. There's no coincidence in the game. It's all premeditated and all planned, bruv. Yeah. Call me negative all you want. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm real. I don't sugarcoat. I have damn standards at Chelsea that our owners set that we had before these clowns. And I will not lower them because you little fucking sheep want to follow the brown envelopes and not get paid. Embarrassing, man. You're an embarrassment. Yeah? But don't worry. You'll be Liam Gallagher. Cry your eyes out. I guarantee it, mate. Yeah? I guarantee it. Because once top four is a distant fucking memory, yeah, we'll see how you are. We'll see how, where you're at, where you're mentally at, bruv. Where you so-called love this project and believe in this project. Let's see. People go, how can people not know what you're, what they're doing? They didn't know. They didn't know last year. I was telling you lot last year when you didn't even know what they're doing. And they had to publicise it only three, four weeks ago, what they're doing. Basing it on Red Bull, multi-club. I was telling you all this, Jazz. And you didn't want to listen to me. You've allowed them to spend billion. Do you know what? We're going to be in fucking financial debt by the end of this year. Coming into January transfer window. Uh, after January transfer window. Summer window. We'll be in debt. They have to go self-sustainability. One out, one in. And look at the state of us. Where you've spent all your money, all your chips, all in, are on these young players. And if they don't land it, and they don't actually deliver the goods... Then we are, that's all we got. You can't change it. We're stuck. Smash that like button. Let's have it right. Smash the piece of the like button. Every single one of you. Yeah. If you ain't subscribed, subscribe to Minerals FC. Goes without saying, guys. Yeah. Jamie Carragher says on the penalty uh, taking argument between Chelsea players, I don't really like that. I think people should know who the penalty taker is before the game. The one thing I I did like was the authority shown by Enzo there for a young player who's saying to seasoned professional 
Raheem, Raheem Sterling, listen, Cole Palmer's taking it and almost in a cool manner, it's almost came across kind of, came across as captain-like, like he's in his early 30s. I thought that was really interesting and it was good to see Cole Palmer score for his performance, but he's just contradicting himself, saying he doesn't like it, yet he's propping what, what he's talking about that he doesn't like. Yeah? It's embarrassing, man. It's an absolute embarrassment, bro. <laughs> Conor Gallagher is more of a captain than anyone we got right now. Yeah. And Thiago Silva is the one. He's the one that should be captain, bro. That's the reality of the game, bruv. Yeah. It's a shambles, man. Top to bottom. It's a fucking circus, mate. Yeah. And I, I listen, I'm no I'm no fool, mate. Yeah. If you don't like what I say, then don't watch me. Don't entertain me. Don't get in my comments. Don't follow me. Don't subscribe to me. It's as simple as that because I don't care. I'm not changing and lowering my standards to, to jump on the bandwagon of all the all the all the all the people that are bought in the fan base. That buy into this, <laughs> no chance. That are PR in it, it's embarrassing, man. It's, it's there's, there's no coincidence with this stuff. Yeah, I'm waiting for the PR PR counter counter attack because it's Don Roman Abramovich's birthday today, and all the Don Roman uh, uh, props going to be flowing around the timeline. And I know for a fact Ted Lasso and Sue Merchant absolutely hate when we chant Roman Abramovich. I know that. I've personally been told it. And they hate it. They have got a full-blown agenda on Roman Abramovich. I know this. So all the ones that are propping these lot, just try and remember that. Digest those minerals in, bruv. Drink those minerals in. Because it's what you know. And what I know in the game, I ain't changing my opinion. I ain't changing these facts I'm landing. No chance, bruv. Right? And I'll never be bought. No one's buying me. No, no one's going to do nothing, bruv. Yeah? Because the reality is, yeah, you can't stand it. You can't stand it. Oh, well, what a shame. What a shame. You're phonies, bruv. When you've got a responsibility to say it as it is and fight for your standards and, and, and defend Roman and what he's built and not accept this nonsense, yeah? It won't be long before you come at them, but by then it's too late. We should be going out in January buying the best of the best. And the summer window. We should have done it this summer window. We should have bought a world-class goalkeeper. We should have bought a world-class striker. We should have bought a number 10 and replaced Mason Mount and Kai Havertz. You didn't do that. You're too busy buying Angelos and Pies that we ain't going to see for three years, bruv. Yeah? You're not thinking about the now, you think about the future, but the future's looking bleak because by the time you get to that future, we're going to be in a shit show. And that's the bottom line, bro. Yeah? Bottom line. Big up to Metal Face Doom. He knows the deal, bro. He knows the deal. He knows the deal, bruv. Let me put it up for you, bruv, so you can fucking read it for your own eyes, yeah? Let me put it up for you. Understand, yeah? Everyone, I know personally, I know personally, bruv, yeah? Of all the accounts. I know. You think I make this shit up? You think I make this up? <laughs> oh, man, I know, mate. I know. Yeah, and I'm not just talking about the top tier ones, bruv. I'm talking all the way down. Trickles all the way down, yeah. Let's have it right. I've got a things off my chest. 
up to Chelsea, up to Minnows FC. Put your comments down below. Make sure you go and watch the show with Lee Gunner before. We're going to do more stuff, I'm sure of it, bruv. It was a cracking show. Um, and respect to him, bruv, because he ain't a brown envelope, yeah? There's too many wishy-washy accounts, bruv. They've got their little NDAs, yeah? Their little agreements. Oh, stay well clear of the Minnows FC, because you know what? We don't like him. We don't like what he says. We don't like, he's against the whole circle, bruv. He's against the narrative. He knows what we know is not true, bruv. We know, he knows everything, bruv. Let's have it right. Well, listen, I know who you are. You're all snakes and ladders. And I don't want anything to do with you. Do you understand me? Snakes and ladders. So continue playing your snakes and ladders until you get bitten, yeah? And you start swelling up and having to go to the hospital to get them to extract that poisonous venom, bruv that you've been a victim of because you wanted to be the big player and make your way up the ladder to be some sort of relevance in the game. Well, listen, good luck to you, bruv. But we don't sell out. We don't sell out our chels and our standards for that nonsense. Yeah, let's have it right. So, big up to every single one of you, bruv. Um, Love to everyone that supports the channel, as always. I'm going to drop out. We've got the Champions League football now. Um, and uh, we'll take it from there, bro. But put your comments down below. I'll try. I will reply to people. I'm going to go through my comments over the last three, three, four streams, bro. Um, and, and start getting involved in the comments. I just haven't had the time. But I will do that. Um, so respect to everyone, yeah. Um, as always, guys, up the Chelsea, up the Minnows FC. Um, we see things they'll never see. Let's have it right. And uh, love to our Don Roman, bruv, whose birthday it is today. And who is the GOAT, greatest owner in world football. Yeah, that, that foot of game will ever see, bruv. No one will ever, everyone wanted a Roman Abramovich. You ain't going to get a Roman Abramovich. One man, billionaire, wants to win, loved football, wasn't in it for just the money. He was in it to make Chelsea the best club in the world. And he actually achieved it, bruv, because we were the Club World Cup, club world Cup champions, champions of Europe, before he got sanctioned, bruv. Savvy, right. That's the levels, bruv, yeah? So, up the Chelsea, up the Minnows FC, up Don Roman Abramovich. And I'll tell you what, guys, yeah, I'll see you soon. Put your comments, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and uh, we move.